three prior owners in an accident on today's inspection. Hi everyone, it's Steph from Deb's RV Services and welcome to today's video. Watch as I inspect a 2015 Coachman Leprechaun. Now, I also run a free VIN report for all my clients and I do that for used RVs only. And you will see that I discovered there were three prior owners and it was a rental. Now, there were no indications of a prior accident on the report, yet I did discover signs of an accident. So watch till the end of today's video so that you can see all the things I discovered on today's inspection. Today's inspection is of a 2015 Coachman Leprechaun. It has two slides and one awning. It has a gross vehicle weight rating of 14,500 pounds. First thing I notice is the windshield wipers. They are worn and need to be replaced. Here I am taking a look at the engine compartment. I'm looking for cleanliness. I am also gonna take a look at all the fluids here. I'm gonna pull the transmission. I'm gonna pull the oil. I'm gonna look at the coolant. There's also an option that clients can request a fluid analysis. And that's where I actually draw the fluids out and then I send it to a lab for further investigation. A report comes back. It does sometimes take up to a week for that to come back, but it is a good way to see how the engine has been taken care of. As I am looking along the front cap, I can see that there's a red mark along that um, curbside front cap. And then I also notice that there are some bubbles in the paint on that passenger side door. As I am doing my sidewall check, I also noticed that down towards the bottom, there appears to be cracks along the wall. And that is where there was an accident. The prior owner hit some type of rock and it damaged part of that sidewall. And then, so I'm taking more pictures and I'm also gonna look inside that cargo area to see if I can find any damage. So here I am looking at the cargo area and I'm just taking a look, I'm holding it up and notice that I have to hold it with my hands so that there's not a latch or anything. It's something that you might wanna think about whenever you're looking at getting a new RV. So I'm just looking inside, making sure there's no structural damage. I know there are some cracks along the sidewall, but inside the cargo unit itself, it's really just banged up a little bit. And it's something that is a preference, a personal preference. If you don't mind that you have a banged up cargo area and it can just be a holding place for some things for you, there's not, it's not actually, there's no holes in it or anything. It's just banged up. So I'm also going to check underneath and I'm going to make sure that the area under there looks okay and nothing else got damaged. I'm doing the rest of my sidewall check now, checking all the sealant to make sure there's no cracks or holes. And I'm gonna check all the cargo areas and look around, take my pictures. And then I also wanna look at the back of the refrigerator. So I'm taking the access panel off so that I can view it more closely. I wanna make sure that there's not a lot of debris in there. I'm checking that the connections are right. And I'm also looking at the baffling to make sure that that looks correct because you don't want too much wind going in the back of the refrigerator because that can mess with your propane, the fire. And um, I'm looking at that drain cap too and making sure that that's not clogged because sometimes that can hold some debris in it. Um, something that you wanna have serviced is and have that looked at every year to make sure that it doesn't need to be replaced. And looks like we have a problem with this awning. It is sticking. Definitely get noted in the report. Checking the slides to make sure they work good and the slides all worked like they should. I'm looking at the sweeps around the slide out and I notice that they're not extracted as they should be. I'm also noticing that the track has some debris in it that could be cleaned. And so I'm gonna continue to take a look underneath and I'm looking at all those sweeps as well. I noticed that the trim of the slide out has a lot of cracked sealant, so I'm gonna note that that needs to be repaired by a qualified technician. So I'm checking the ladder to make sure that it's nice and sturdy, and I go ahead and climb up so that I can inspect the roof. Now, the funny thing is, is that I accidentally have my camera upside down, so it looks like I'm inspecting the ceiling, but it is the roof. 
So I'm looking around and a lot of the sealant needs to have some maintenance, needs to be repaired. I find some holes around the, the vent um, area and there were some other cracks and holes around all the other vents and the refrigerator cover as well. So I just note all that in my report. Now I'm checking out the slide roof and I'm looking along and I can see that some of the, again, some of the sweeps, they do look aged and are showing signs of needing replacement. So you can see some of the cracks in the, um, in the sweep. And then along the top, you can see some separation. So I recommend that get repaired by a technician. Okay, now I am going to do the tire check. So I'm looking at all the tires. I'm gonna check the tread and I'm going to check the PSI pressure for each tire. Once I finish that, I do go underneath and I check everything behind the tire. And then I'm gonna go ahead and look at all of the components underneath the chassis, including the steering components. I'm looking at the axles, I'm looking at the springs. And I'm just making sure that I don't see anything that is peculiar, any oil stains, leaks, or missing bolts, loose bolts, anything like that. I'm now inspecting the outdoor shower, so I go ahead and open up that accessory panel. I pull out the shower head and turn it on, make sure that it's running correctly. Then I notice that there is some leaking going on at the connection. So I just take a picture of that and note it in my report. One of the things I do when I inspect the propane tank is I make sure that there's a cover over the regulator. It's important to help keep debris out. I'm also making a note of the date of the tank. Here's a tour of the interior of the RV. I'm about to start my inspection on the inside. Thought I'd give you guys just a peek to see what it looks like before I start my inspection. I am starting my inspection on the interior and I'm just checking to make sure that everything works. I'm going through and looking at all of the cupboards, the refrigerator, making my way around the front part of that RV and I'm doing a leak test from the sink, filling it with water and then looking at the plumbing as I drain it and capturing that on video. When I was doing my microwave test, I noticed that the water did not heat up properly after one minute. This is one of the problems when you don't inspect an RV with the proper voltage that's necessary. This is a 30 amp coach, but it was only on a 110. There was not enough voltage for the microwave to properly heat that water. That is one of the reasons I really like to make sure that I have proper voltage when doing my inspections. I always make sure that I inspect along the trim pieces to make sure that they are stable and also that they are connected properly. On this one, I did find that one of the trim pieces was loose. Moving right along, I'm gonna check out the bunk area and make sure that the bed folds down properly and goes back up. I'm also going to check all the outlets, polarity, the GFCI. I'm gonna check out the windows. And then I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that the door closes, locks, opens, and then I'm gonna go through all the trim area around that. Going through the bedroom area now and I'm just gonna open up all of the closets and drawers and look through all of those. Everything looked pretty good in there. Last but not least, I am checking out the bathroom and I did find a couple things in here. So after I looked in all the cabinets, I went ahead and decided to test out the fan and I'll let you listen to what that sounded like when I tested it out. Now 
Then I noticed as I was testing out the sink that there was water all around the sink area and it was leaking at the stem. I also looked on the floor and I had been testing out the toilet bowl and noticed there was some water right around the stem of the toilet. So both of those had to get noted in my report. I tested out the shower area and the door was a little bit difficult to open and close. I mean, it did work, but it's just sometimes these things are not that easy to open and close. Thank you for watching today's video. What did you think? So running that VIN report I think was super helpful. I just started doing that with my clients and I we were able to see that there were three prior owners. There were no indications of an accident on there, but he did find out from the prior owner that there was, uh, he hit a rock or something like that, which caused that um, the area in that cargo bay to look dented and there were some cracks and everything. But overall, there, there were a lot of things that I found in this RV. My client still purchased it because he did save money. He had negotiated a price. He got a good price for the RV and he did set aside money for repairs. And all of the things that we found were things that he could get repaired. So it's always up to the individual. The inspection is so important because you can use it for negotiating and then you know what you are expected to fix after you get the RV. And all those things lumped together were it wasn't a deal breaker for my client. So I hope that you enjoyed today's video. Please comment below. Let me know what you think and I will see you on the next one.